Welcome back to Bazaar Morning Call this morning. The SGX Nifty is indicating a bright shade of green and that's how we're going to begin. But then we'll take it from there. It's been a volatile last few days. Let's get our research team to tell you about the list of top 10 stocks to watch. And Reliance Industries is top of mind this morning. Mangalam has the fine print on that. Mangalam, over to you. Well, late last night, we did get uh, the notification on the exchange that Reliance has gone ahead and bought Metro AG's cash and carry business in India for about 28.50 odd crore rupees. There were uh, rumours that this deal would come by and now it is official. Metro AG, of course, is a leading international food wholesaler. The India business, they have 31 large format stores and 7,700 crore rupees in terms of revenues. So, you know, uh, just from a price to sales standpoint, this is an attractive uh, deal that Reliance has. And importantly, we need to watch out for what they do with the profitability and scale uh, the synergies of the company as well. And do they move this business vertically as well as horizontally? Do they go apart from cash and carry into whole, wholesale retail as well? Currently, the metro cash and carry business in India supplies to a lot of Kirana and other small businesses. And that is what Reliance likes as well. They say that this will further strengthen their physical store footprint. But apart from that, uh, they get access to a wide network of uh, stores located in prime locations. But they also get a large base of registered Kiranas and institutional customers along with a strong supplier network. So from an ecosystem standpoint, this is a positive and the valuation that they've given is attractive as well. See Green. All right. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Magalam, for that. So that's something we'll touch base on with an analyst in a bit from now as well in terms of implications. But Ajanta Pharma is the next one which we're talking about. Vivek is standing by with more. Vivek, hi. Well, uh, good morning. So Ajanta Pharma, you know, sources indicate to us that we are uh, expecting a largest block deal in this particular name. Now, two promoter group entities are anticipated to sell close to 4.56% stake in the company. And, you know, this particular stake, uh, you're expecting almost a little over 600 50 crores to change hands in today's anticipated block deal. Now, the lower end of the price range is at uh, 1,113 rupees, which indicates almost a 5% discount to yesterday's closing price. So, who are the promoter entities? You know, two trusts, uh, uh, Ayush Agarwal Trust and Ravi Agarwal Trust. Both of these trusts hold a little over 14.3% stake in the company. And interestingly, you know, there's a 90-day lock-in on further sale of shares. So, I expect this particular stock to open in the red. And depending on the demand that this particular block sees, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to to see whether this particular stock recovers. The stock actually underperformed peers even as the pharma pack rallied yesterday. Thank you very much for that. Let's get to Bandhan Bank. Abhishek is here to tell us more. Abhishek? Well, good news for Bandhan Bank, uh, given the fact that they have been able to sell uh, their return of portfolio to an ARC. So, bank has received binding bid from an ARC, so they will receive 100 and, uh, 801 crore on the in terms of security receipts, which is a 1585 uh, kind of a ratio, where 15% uh, 10% is actually coming in. Sorry, 10% is actually coming in as close to security receipts, while the 90-91% is going to ARC. So, a uh, return of portfolio is about 8,900 crore. Um, mainly or largely made up of the individual loans which have been written off over the last few quarters. The bank shall go uh, uh, bidding uh, for bidding as per the Swiss uh, challenge method. Now, sources do tell us that the bid has come from an ARC. Uh, so, bid likely to have come from a big bank and an ARC together. So, ARC plus an investor is there for the bid of, uh, you know, bad assets in Bandhan Bank. So, board uh, meet will happen next week to consider and approve of the same and also release the name of the ARC as well as the investor. Back to you. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, let's go back to Vivek now and talk about Kalpa through Power and JMC projects. Vivek, over to you. Uh, well, that's right. You know, both of the companies that had initiated a merger project of Kalpataru Power and uh, JMC projects, you know, this particular merger will fructify soon. The NCLT, the National Company Law Tribunal, has approved the merger of both of these companies. So the combined entity will now be quite a significant entity, a uh, diversified engineering and construction company, order book, a consolidated order book of a little over 38,000 crore rupees, and order visibility of almost 43,000 crore rupees. Now, analysts believe that this is a significant positive development as far as Kalpataru is concerned. They believe that merger synergies here will be quite significant. Uh, remember, the merger ratio is uh, one share of Kalpataru power for four share held in JMC projects. Interesting to see how the stock reacts. It's a positive development as far as both of these companies are concerned. All right. Uh Rima, Tata Communications uh, in focus as well? Well, they've done an acquisition. So Tata Communication is going to be acquiring a company called Switch Enterprise for 486 crore. 
Now this, according to the company, this acquisition of Switch will provide a direct upsell opportunity for Tata Communications offerings. It will help them um, you know, expand their video connect business and it will expand their presence in Europe as well as North America. So these are the synergies and the driving factors, the rationale for this acquisition. As I said, 486 crore is what the company is paying. The acquired company had revenues of 675 crore rupees. The acquisition will be completed in the next four to six months and the company will be paying all the amount in cash. The stock, however, is down 13% so far this year. Okay, so that's on Tata Communications. But Surbhi is with us. She's tracking Max Financial Services and Boro still this morning. Surbhi, over to you. Hi, thanks for that. So the first one is Max Financial, where Max Ventures Investment Holdings, a promoter of the company, has sold close to 59 lakh shares for 400 crore rupees through an open market, uh, open market transaction yesterday. The shares were sold at an average cost of 679 rupees per share. Following the sale, the share holding of the promoter has come down to 13% uh, percent versus 14.72% previously. Next is Borosul, where the company has commenced trial production for Opel Wearglass in its Jaipur plant. The plant has an additional capacity of 42 tons per day. All right, Borosul and Focus will be thanks for that. Alkali Mines and Balaji Mines, etc., should be in focus. Sonal is here with more on this. Sonal, hi. Good morning, Prashant. Well, yes, these two stocks will be in focus because DGTR has recommended extension of anti-dumping duty on monoisopropylamine imports. Uh, now, it's again just a recommendation and still needs to be notified by the Finance Ministry. But on the back of this, could see some green on the stock today. Now, anti-dumping duty on monoisopropylamine imports is from China, which will continue for five years according to the recommendation. And it is alkyl amines which had gone ahead and put in this request for extension of this anti-dumping duty. We don't know the exact uh, percentage in terms of contribution of revenues coming in from this product, but it will be a positive because this will safeguard them in terms of dumping of these products in the country. Okay, thanks a lot for that. So, Sorry, did you, uh, Sorrel, can you say that uh, the, the name Mono of the compound? Mono <laughs> Say it again, slowly. <laughs> Mono isopropylamine. No, I, I lost her at Mono. <laughs> repeat it, you have After to three that, times. Uh, I'll teach you all offline. <laughs> Shant, I think you need to repeat it now. You've heard it three times, now you need to repeat what she said. There's one thing I hated with all my, uh, all passion is chemistry. <laughs> going now, so I, I pretty so. much lost her at Mono. I was like, okay, she knows what she's talking. I don't need to listen to that. All right, thanks a lot, Sonal, for, ex for that explainer. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's move on and talk about uh, the price of crude, which has gone up actually over $2 a barrel on the back of a drawdown in the US crude uh, stockpiles. Manisha Gupta is here to keep, give us a quick lowdown on all that's been happening there. Manisha, morning. Sonia, thank you for that. Well, he has 2% of gains in the overnight market and a surprise decline in the crude inventories in US by 3.1 million barrels clearly has taken the prices higher. So we are holding above $82 per barrel right now. Also, after the G7 sanctions, we've seen a complete collapse from Russia in terms of seaborne seaborne crude oil export. That seems to be supporting prices also. And then the markets are looking at Chinese reopening. The months of November and December until now in terms of loading have been on the positive side on a year-on-year -year basis, and that is clearly supportive. But not just crude. I mean, I quickly want to tell you that gold prices are trading <clears throat> pardon me, at a five-month high. You have copper prices gaining up by 2% in this week. Sugar is trading at a six-year high. Soybean three-month highs, cotton at two-month highs, silver at eight-month highs, steel prices are back, iron ore is trading at a six-month highs. So commodities have started Asia on a very strong footing. Okay, Manisha, thank you very much for that. Let's do a quick recap then of the top stocks this morning, this Thursday morning. Stocks with positive news flow are Reliance, Bandhan Bank, Kalpataru Power Transmission, JMC Project, Starter Communications, Borosil, ONGC, Alkalamine Chemicals, while stocks with negative news flow are Ajanta Pharma and Max Financial Services. Okay, we'll discuss all of these stocks and more on the other side of the break. Market expert Dilip Bhatt will be joining in for some fundamental stock analysis. We'll also discuss Reliance Retail's acquisition of Metro AG's Cash and Carry India with Shirish Pardeshi of Centrum. We'll also connect with Dr. Gagandeep Kang and Rahul Guha of Thyrocare to discuss the rising concerns in the country over the surge of COVID cases in China and what the impact may be. Stay tuned for that.